the coast and the heartland collide today in Long Beach, California. Stanford personifies West Coast dominance. With five NCAA championships gunning for a sixth, they've got the National Player of the Year, Ogunna Namani, flying high. The Cardinals are trying to bring the trophy back to the farm. The Golden Gophers are gearing up for their first shot ever at a national title. They play with the passion and hunger of a Midwestern program looking for respect and a spot among the nation's elite. It's Stanford and Minnesota for the national championship. From the Long Beach Arena, it's the 2004 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Championship. The 11 seed Stanford Cardinal and the four seed Minnesota Golden Gophers. Both teams were 3-1 winners in the semis. A huge win for Minnesota as they denied USC a chance for a third consecutive national championship. Hi, I'm Beth Mullins along with Heather Cox. And uh, Heather, the big story here at this uh, national championship match will be the play of Ogunna Namani, the four-time All-American, has been terrific in the postseason. And truly, as Ogunna goes, Stanford goes. She's a 2004 Olympian, and she understands how to play under pressure. She's simply overpowering, playing at a higher level than anyone else in the country. Had 33 kills in the national semifinal win. Fourth 30 kill plus performance for Stanford. No surprise, Stanford has won all those matches. She took about a third of the swings in that semi for Stanford, while Minnesota in their win, they spread the ball around a little more. Well, really, Minnesota relies on all six players playing their role to perfection, and they rely on emotion. Coach Ebert said if all parts are working, this will be a fairly even matchup, but winning comes from every player addressing the needs of the team. Stanford. The Pac-10 powerhouse with all the tradition and all the titles. Minnesota, the team trying to shift the balance of power back to the Big Ten with the focus and the fury of a first-timer. Two teams left, but just one title. It's the national championship match, Stanford and Minnesota. You buy Coca-Cola. Let's make it real. And from the Queen Mary out in the Long Beach Harbor, just moments away, we are inside the Long Beach Arena and set for the Women's National Championship match. And uh, let's meet the starting lineup for the Cardinal. Hi, my name is Jen Huckey. I'm an opposite hitter, and my favorite athlete is Josh Childress for the Atlanta Hawks. Hi, my name is Kristen Richards. I'm an outside hitter, and my residence at Stanford University is called the Enchanted Broccoli Forest. Hi, my name is Agana Namani. I'm from Norman, Illinois, and I play outside hitter. A quick fact about me is that I love classical music, and I used to play the violin. Hi, I'm Lizzie Suter. I'm a middle blocker, and I'm not scared of snakes or spiders, but I'm terrified of moths. Hi, my name is Francie Gerard. I'm a middle blocker, and my favorite movie is Love and Basketball. Hi, my name is Bryn Kehoe. I'm a setter, and if I had to eat one thing for the rest of my life, it'd be peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Hi, I'm Courtney Schultz. I'm a libero, and I can pass and dig, but I can't hit. And the head coach for Stanford, John Dunning, won two national championships at Pacific, now looking for a second at Stanford. And here's the lineup for Minnesota. Hi, my name is Tricia Bradford. I'm an outside hitter. An interesting fact about me is I just graduated in May with a degree in family social science. My name is Erin Martin. I'm an outside hitter, and one of the things I like to do is watch Monday Night Football. Hi, I'm Meredith Nelson, a middle blocker, and I was a three-sport starter in high school. I'm Jesse Jones, I'm a middle blocker, and I had two surgeries one year, a knee surgery and a shoulder surgery, and I'm back. My name's Kelly Bowman, I'm a setter, and I have a sister on the volleyball team. My name is Lindsay Tejas, and I'm a setter. An interesting fact about me is that I've been married for a year and a half. Hi, I'm Polly Jane Chu, I'm a Libra, and this year I can serve. And the coach of the Gophers, Three decades as a coach, a teacher, and a volleyball philosopher. It's Mike Hebert on the bench for his first national championship game. Minnesota in the white jerseys, uh, Stanford in the dark. Free ball here for Minnesota. Lindsay Tages, one of two setters that Minnesota will employ, and they get the first points of the match. Mike Hebert told me before the match that he actually isn't nervous playing for a first national championship at Minnesota. Said the pressure was in the regional final in getting here. Now I'm relaxed and just enjoying it. Genshu with the serve. Namani 
with her first big swing. Nimani coming off that 2004 Olympic appearance in Athens said in the beginning of the year it was tough emotionally to make that transition from international volleyball but now just feels very comfortable out on the court. That one misses wide and the Cardinal will take the early 2-1 lead. There is Ogana Nimani. She and Stacy Gordon at Ohio State the co-national players of the year. Ogana a bio major would like to be a doctor after her volleyball playing days are over. That may not be for a while, though. She uh, has a very bright future with uh, USA Volleyball. Clear-cut favorite for that 2018 in Beijing. The serve from Tejas. Bryn Kehoe, the freshman setter for Stanford. This is Aaron Martin off the fingertips. Kehoe looking for Namani. Down the line, avoids the double block. Interesting matchup, Beth, because you've got Stanford, five-time national champion against a team that's never played for one, yet Minnesota, the more experienced team, six seniors on the squad. You saw there Bryn Kehoe, the setter for Stanford, a true freshman. Big swing from Minnesota, and Meredith Nelson gets the kill, the sophomore, who was slowed a, a little bit by an ankle injury in the semifinal. And now Marcy Pinata is on to serve, a sophomore from Plymouth, Minnesota. Otherwise known as Peanut. Stanford, uh, Namani hit the net on that one, so a point for Minnesota. Both these teams were runners-up in the regular season. Minnesota in the Big Ten to Penn State. Stanford finished second to Washington, but they have been the hottest two teams coming into the postseason. And the block is up for Tricia Bradford. And Stanford again into the net. There is Tree from Reseda, California, up in the valley. And Pinata off to a great start for Minnesota. This is the rotation that Mike Hebert wanted to start in because Marcy Pinata is so good from the end line, serving those great, tough jump floats. The back set. Suter had it blocked. Now Keo will go back to the outside, and Namani with the cut cross court for the kill. That's her third here in the early going. The senior from Normal, Illinois, seventh all time in career kills in NCAA history. The tip from Minnesota Stanford's defense is there. The back set to Hockey. Beth, I think Jen Huckey is the X factor in this match. A huge plus for Stanford fans that she's starting on such a tear. Playing with a sore shoulder, injured it Thursday in the morning before their national semifinal win. Another chance here for Stanford. Kehoe tracks it down, goes to Kristen Richards. And Richards and Huckey scoring early for the Cardinal. It's best three of five to win the match. Rally scoring, so there is a point on every serve. The games are to 30 unless we go to a game five and then it's first to 15 and you have to win the games by two. Bradford blocked by Suter. We talked about Minnesota needing that team effort. Well, right now Stanford's the one getting it. All the extra pieces, the role players really stepping up, including the sophomore Lizzie Suter. Yeah, Namani carried them through the first two games of their semi and then the rest of the team showed up for games three and four and uh, helped with the load. Richards back row, dug up by Paula Zhenshu, the three-time defensive player of the year in the Big Ten. There she is with the bump. Nelson sliding behind. Kehoe's gonna look to Namani out of the back row. Good defense by Tejas. And now it's a free ball for the Cardinal. Jen Huckey. Back row. At no time can a player touch that white line. You see the line that crosses across the court. It's called a three meter line or a 10 foot line. There it is for Minnesota. At no time can you step on that line if you're a back row player trying to attack. Service error on the serve from Namani. 8 7 Stanford here in game one, which has uh, been a good barometer for the Cardinal this year. They have not lost a match when they have won the opening game. 23 and 0 including their semifinal win. Oh, what an athletic tip by Namani. To talk about the importance of winning game one for Stanford, I think it's because this is a team that 
thrives on emotion and confidence. This is a team that will flat out tell you we weren't very good at the beginning of the year. They didn't think they'd be above 500. Now playing for a national championship because of the confidence game. They've now won 14 matches in a row. And an encouraging point right there. The kill for Kelly Bowman, who was disappointed in her performance in the semis. Looking to have a much bigger impact here today in the final. Richards rejected Jesse Jones with the block up. Can't say enough about what Jesse Jones has done for Minnesota over the last three days. She's a starting freshman in the middle, started her first career match in the semifinal win against USC, and I think was the difference out there. That's not too much pressure coming in <laughs> in the semis. Well, it's funny. Mike Hebert said to her yesterday, how you doing, Jesse? She said, don't talk to me. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to deal with it. I'll deal with it on Sunday. <laughs> Good to be, you know, they say freshmen are just young and blind. <laughs> Bowman, the back set to Tejas. And Jones jumps on the overpass. I talked to Mike Hebert before the match, and I said that was one of the gutsiest, riskiest moves we've seen in a long time in national semifinal history, starting a freshman for the first time ever. And he said all season long, I told her, just be patient. There will be a moment for you. Couldn't have come at a better time. Back row, Namani gets that one down. It was her freshman year that John Dunning was at Stanford in his first season after coming over from the University of Pacific. And together they combined to win that 2001 national championship, their most recent of five NCAA titles. That's the most in NCAA tournament history. Take a look at that tie. It's got some significance. The lucky tie bought by his wife, Julie, for his birthday on November 6th. John has worn it for every match since then, part of that 14 match win streak. It's funny, Julie said to me that uh, he only packed one tie, knew he was gonna wear it the entire time, but he didn't have a shirt to go with it. There's Julie Dunning, <laughs> helping him out with his wardrobe. Doesn't think the shirt goes with the tie, but you gotta go with the lucky ensemble. Yeah, Stanford has been sticking with a lot of superstitions uh, over the course of that 14 match win streak lizzie Souter hasn't changed the bow in her hair and francie gerard's knee pads are out walking around by themselves they Yuck. haven't been washed since their last loss for you volleyball players out there you know <laughs> you want to wash them after every match every practice they can take on a life of their own it's a 14 match win streak dating back to halloween and not only have they won 14 matches in a row they've only lost seven games total over that stretch Free ball here for Minnesota. Jen Shu with the pass to Tejas. Bowman attacking in the middle. She's already got more kills today than she had the entire semifinal match. And that was a concern coming in. She'd just been named first team All-American, went to play SC on Thursday and was flat out nervous. She was flat, didn't play her typical style, but Coach Hebert said she's had bad matches before and she can bounce back. She's got sort of the memory of a free safety. You've got to have a very short memory. <laughs> Big week for her, not only here at the uh, National Championship match, but all American honor for the first time in her career is Onana, Ogana Namani with four All-America honors, has six kills now in the game. She had 33 in the semifinal win. Namani again out of the back row, Jenshu digs it up. Bowman puts it into the net. Two-point lead for the Cardinal. When we come back, a closer look at senior Lindsay Tages. She was the regional MVP in helping get Minnesota back to its second appearance in the national semis and now the first trip to the final there's ted tages just a great story plays as you heard lindsay say for the northwestern basketball team in st paul minneapolis his coach actually gave him permission to miss the game last night against uh let's see grandview in ames iowa they ended up losing by 10 they could have used teddy <laughs> but the coach actually said hey you need to see your wife compete for national championship and gave him a bit of a hall pass once in a lifetime opportunity. He's already chewing on the nails. He can't watch right now. It's worse for <laughs> him than it is for Lindsay. <laughs> Known each other since elementary school, since kindergarten with their first meeting. The block is there from Richards, as well as Lizzie Souter. 
couple of sophomores. Richards out of Orem, Utah. Just down the road from Salt Lake City, where, of course, Logan Tom hails from their former All-American and Olympian out of Stanford. This is a program rich in tradition. They're on a 5-0 run right now. Looking for their sixth national championship. And we'll take a timeout and be back right after this. We're cooking all through the holidays. So bring you this afternoon, Stanford up in game one. And John Dunning, a part of a rich tradition of success at Stanford, including those five national championships. Unbelievable history. And you look at it, I mean, it's all time in the 90s. And in the last couple of years, Don Shaw, of course, won four of those national titles. John Dunning won in his first year, ironically, both at Pacific in 85 and at Stanford in 01. This is the fourth appearance in the championship match in the last six years for Stanford. And this championship, by the way, closes out the NCAA fall championship season. 22 different championships handed out in NCAA competition including a couple of football championships this weekend, both won by teams winning their first national championship, so perhaps a sign for Minnesota. We're certainly hoping that James Madison provides a little inspiration winning in the one double-A last night. Minfield, a Division Three winner out of Oregon for the first time earlier today here on the ESPN family of networks. Richards swooping in. Zhenshu got a piece of it to keep it alive. Back row from Bradford. Here comes the Cardinal attack. They go back to Richards and she beats the block. Talk about the rich tradition at Stanford. Players like Logan Tom, Ogun and Amani, Carrie Wendell, and there's Carrie Walsh right there in the middle of your screen. 2004 Olympian, won a gold medal with Misty May. In fact, we'll be talking to the two of them in between the second and third game. The block for a point for Minnesota. Yeah, they were the uh, Golden Girls of the Olympics in Athens, winning out on the beach. A lot of these young players that you talk to hope to either play on the indoor team or play on the beach after their collegiate careers are done. Oh, big block. Three Golden Gophers up to reject Richards on that one. And that was the key for Minnesota in the semifinal win against USC. 17 team blocks. They're great putting up the triple block, something you see more in men's volleyball than in women's. Martin, that one didn't make it over. Paul Zhenshu, number 15 for Minnesota with that different colored jersey. What coverage she has, gets a piece of it with a, a wrist, a finger, an elbow, anything to keep it up in the air. Yeah, that Libro wearing that separate jersey, meaning that she can enter the game without counting as a substitution, is in for ball control and defense, and this year for the first time is allowed to serve. College into a first team All-American the first time this year that a Libro has been named that All-American team. And in years to come, coaches will put her up and hold her as the standard bearer for that position that they want their players in the next generation to be like in that position. Yeah, Minnesota making some uncharacteristic errors. They're playing like a team that's never been here before. And Mike Hebert, who's really a, a studies the psychology of sport, you know, he's one of those coaches that wasn't a player as much as a teacher and uh, certainly trying to figure out how to get his team to play its style. Martin blocked by Kehoe. The freshman center was up there next to Suter. Bryn Keogh, the opportunity to become the first setter as a true freshman in the 5-1 offense to win a national championship. Great one-on-one -on -one block against Martin. She is off to a terrific start, not showing any nerves for the rookie out of North Bend, Ohio. Namani with the solo block. Bryn, quick set in the middle for Suter, finds the corner, and Stanford has come out hot. Timeout, Minnesota. Cardinal looking for their uh, first championship since that 2001 title. 
And uh, let's take a look back at the 2001 championship team that John Dunning coached and Ogunna Namani was a player on alongside uh, Logan Tom. Ogunna Namani, just a freshman. Logan Tom leading the way. Kerry Walsh also on a team full of All-Americans. Sarah McGee, Jen Harvey, just a great group. Robin Lewis as a setter with Kerry Walsh, just a uh, 2001 team getting their fifth championship. There's Kerry Walsh, bombarded, no surprise, <laughs> poor thing. Ever since she came back from Athens in the end of August, she has been the it girl. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's trying to flag down the popcorn guy. Kerry, well, what a team. That, how did they ever lose a game? With three Olympians on that 2001 club. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very impressive. And she's just gone on to uh, continue in volleyball excellence and made a name for herself. Look at this. She doesn't even know she's on TV. You know what her nickname was in Athens? We called her Six Feet of Sunshine. <laughs> That's what her boyfriend, Casey Jennings, calls her. And it is so true. Just never a bad day in Carrie Walsh's world. And we will hear from Carrie and uh, Misty May coming up later on. Right now, the Cardinal. In control, 24 to 18. This is the best that we have seen them play this weekend. The stretch that they've uh, gone on here to start out the match. Richards got a piece of it. Off of Suter's head, kept alive by Stanford. Kelly Bowman. And the slide behind from Meredith Nelson. She's definitely somebody we need to keep our eye on. <laughs> Sprain that left ankle against USC, had it retaped. Came out and continued to perform, but Mike Hebert did say she's lost a little bit of that explosiveness. If she can't put up the numbers that they need, they've got a player in Jessica Burns that can come in off the bench. Nelson passed up on scholarships from other colleges to play at Minnesota. In fact, one of those other colleges, actually Stanford, offering her for a full ride. Her recruiting trip, she actually went to Minnesota when Stanford was in town playing. Stanford won, but Meredith's so impressed with Minnesota's chemistry and just their how close their team was that she chose to walk on at Minnesota rather than taking a scholarship at Stanford. Another player ended up uh, not taking a scholarship, so Meredith was able to uh, get the scholarship and start out her career. She had that last kill, now trying to block Namani, and Agona beats her to it. We're kind of off to a nearly flawless start. Nine kills now, no hitting errors. Hitting well over 600. You know, most mortals like to hit over about 300 if they're having a great match. <laughs> it's a number similar to baseball, isn't it? If you're hitting over 300, you're pretty good. So exactly. 600. <laughs> She's going for a World Series if you're hitting over 600. There she is, 571. Now serving it up. Nelson blocked by Suter in the middle. Now it's Tree Bradford cross court and got that one down. Tree Bradford, another player on a sore ankle, sprained it against Long Island in the first round of the NCAA championships. We talked about Stanford's 14 game wins, uh, match win streak. It's 12 in a row for Minnesota on and their late season run. Really, any coach wants. At the beginning in August, during two days, during fall camp, the goal is to play your best volleyball in November. It's not like college football where one loss and you're pretty much out of the national championship picture. These teams are doing everything they can to peak late November, early December to be playing their best come tournament time. It's the second year in a row that Minnesota has been in the semis of their first trip to the final. There's a good block for the Golden Gophers. They were run out of town last year by USC, a bit overwhelmed, and the word they used when we talked to the players was we were in awe of the surroundings, and that's not the case with this year's club. Well, this year they truly believe that they deserve to be here, and it showed by upsetting the two-time defending national champs. USC trying to go for a piece of history, become the first team to win three in a row. Instead, Minnesota's here. Game point now for the Cardinal. Roman. Contagious block by Richards. Stanford 23 and 0 on the season when they win game one and they take the opener in the national championship match. 30 to 23 behind their national player of the year, Ogunna Namani.
Stanford Cardinal in game one. They had their way with Minnesota. National Player of the Year, Ogunna Namani with eight kills. As the Cardinal take the opener, 30 to 23. Welcome back to Long Beach and the NCAA 2004 Women's Division I Volleyball National Championship match. And the stats from that first uh, game. And obviously offense critical. Stanford hitting almost 400 as a team. Minnesota always known for great defense, and that's the same tonight, but offensively they're just not getting it done. And I think the difference is on the outside. I think both middle attacks will neutralize one another. The presence for both teams has to be on the outside. You see Namani with eight kills. She's getting great support from Kristen Richards, but five kills. Minnesota not getting that same type of support from their outside hitters. Aaron Martin and Tree Bradford combining for just three kills and the negative at that position. And over the years, the names may change, but the program stays the same since 92, 43 and one when they win game one. Minnesota will be up against it. Incidentally, in the last 10 years, or in the last 12 years, rather, the team that has won game one in the final 10 of those have gone on to win the title. So a good barometer for Stanford. On the flip side, I think if any team can make the adjustments it needs to, it's Mike Hebert's Minnesota squad. He's a great tactician, really loves the strategy and the philosophy. The key is, how do you stop Ogun and Amani? Eight kills, no errors. Interestingly, Coach Hebert said the key is to think that we have a plan against Ogunna and to make Ogunna think that we have one. But honestly, we can't waste so much time worrying about her because she's gonna hit right over us anyway. We need to stop everybody else. And there she did, right over the top of Jesse Jones, who's 6'3". But it doesn't matter with Namani. Bowman looking for Jones. Block that one blocker is getting the job done for Stanford so far. For a complete wrap-up of the 2004 Fall NCAA Championships, including men's and women's soccer and men's water polo, visit NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. Boy, and a tough start for Aaron Martin, who has really become Minnesota's go-to player. Now three hitting errors. She's got to find a way to score. And if you check out NCAAsports.com, uh, the most recent championship would be to Linfield of Oregon for the D3 football title earlier today. Aaron Martin. The block got a piece of it, but the Cardinal able to keep it in play. The tip from Tejas. Now a chance for Stanford Namani. She takes a little bit off. The pancake dig by Zhen Shu and gets Minnesota the point. When it plays like that, that can immediately turn momentum. Jen Shu, one of the best Libros in the country, picks up the pancake. Watch the palm. Anytime it touches any part of your body and not the floor, you're good to go. Free ball here for Minnesota. Bowman. The middle attack by Lindsay Tages in her first year as a hitter in this 6-2 offense. This spring, Mike Hebert said, hey, you might want to work on your hitting. We might implement a 6-2. She'd never hit before. It wasn't until then that they learned she's a goofy footer, meaning she uses the wrong steps on her approach. It's backwards. Mike Hebert will explain that 6-2 offense to us a little bit better in our Home Depot coaches clinic coming up later in the match. Lindsay Tages, a lot of players that are goofy footers, it takes them years to fix it. Tages did it in a week. Hebert said he told her once, she worked on it for a week. Now she's doing it flawlessly, and it's helped tremendously having her as an offensive threat. And Bowman setting up Nelson. Five kills now for Meredith. She had 13 in the semis. And that's a good sign. You saw her go off of one leg. She went off of her left leg. That's the bad ankle, so obviously not bothering her too much. Pages. And the block goes wide from the money as Nelson has become the go-to hitter here in game two. Overpass. There's Meredith to jump on it. Benchu. 
the Tejas. Now it's Bowman getting a swing in. Cross court, Aaron Martin. And Beth, the difference in these last couple rallies, Ogunna's getting her swings, but Minnesota is picking them up. Anytime you can touch an Ogunna swing, you're in good shape. Great dig by Richard starts it off, but Martin coming alive. Martin and Nelson, a great one-two punch right now for the Gophers. And you talked about the balance uh, early on in the match, Heather. Three different players took a swing on that rally for Minnesota as they spread it all over the floor. And they are up right now in game two, six to five. After dropping the opener, 30 to 23, behind eight kills from this woman right here, Ogunna Namani. Martin, the block goes wide. Point Minnesota. Martin goes out to a member of this terrific senior class for Minnesota that's gotten a number one ranking, a Big Ten championship, their first trip to the national championship match. And five of the six seniors are from the Midwest. Bradford is from out here in Southern California. And so while Minnesota in unfamiliar territory, they're doing it with a lot of experience on their roster. On the flip side, Stanford's got a lot of championship experience, but not players that are on the current team. John Dunning said that that experience makes a difference, though. They have the confidence that they know the program's been here before. And he said, even though a lot of the players have never been here before, we know that we belong here. And the Stanford family has really been helpful to these younger players. A lot of the alums still sticking around and staying in touch with these players to pass along the tradition and the pride of putting on that Stanford jersey. Several of the players that we talk to say they often run into former players from the last few years or share emails with former members of the Cardinal uh, clan. Everybody here to support Stanford. The athletic department very close. And yes, there's the men's volleyball team making the trip down. Now coached by Don Shaw, Kevin Hansen, the setter, Paul Baumhack, some great players. Uh, Stanford getting ready to start off the men's season. They play in the spring. Of course, that's pretty much expected for all of the athletic teams at Stanford. You're gonna you're gonna get a good education, you're gonna win. Yeah, pretty much anything <laughs> other than a national championship, a disappointing season. This is Jen Huffy from Fallon, Nevada. Bowman blocked by Richards, but missed it wide. So Kelly Bowman with another kill. The sophomore from Maple Grove, Minnesota. Her nine triple doubles led the NCAAs this year. And the service error gets a point for Stanford. They take the 10-9 lead here in game two. You see Kelly Bowman pulling her shirt out. She's calling the play. She's like the quarterback of this team, signaling what offense they're running. Bradford beats the block. That set called a four. It's a high outside set. In the 6-2 offense, Bowman and Tages have three set, three hitters at all times. So she'll call three different plays each time they're receiving serve. So all three hitters know what offense they're running. Bryn Kehoe to Francie Girard. That's freshman to freshman right there. Girard out of New York City in Brooklyn. Didn't really pick up uh, volleyball seriously till she was in high school and her coach was a former member of the Jamaican national team who saw the potential in Girard. Jones with the tip. This is in shoot. Bowman looking at Aaron Martin. Great offensive call. We talked about the four in the play prior to that. That's a high outside set. This is a 32. Watch how it drops inside. It's a lot faster. You try to beat the block to the ball as she cranks it inside. That's a great play call. Another service error for Minnesota. Kehoe, quick set in the middle to Suter. Point Cardinal. And Stanford's middle blocking duo doing a nice job in the second game. Suter and Gerard both getting more involved. Six kills now from that middle blocker position for Stanford. And that is a completely new middle block this year for the Cardinal. They had to replace both their starters from a year ago. 
As Minnesota bounces back to get the point. The Minnesota definitely still winning in that middle blocker category, though. Ten kills combined now for Meredith Nelson and Jesse Jones. Tejas with the jump serve. Kehoe to hockey. This is wide point for the Cardinal. Talk about Stanford missing those two middle blockers where you can see the dominance that they've had over the last six years leading their conference in blocks. I mean, that is complete dominance defensively. Sarah McGee and Jen Harvey, the two middle blockers that Stanford lost to graduation. Suter and Gerard, one of many question marks for Stanford at the beginning of the year. And like I said, the coaching staff thought they'd be lucky to be above 500, had no idea until they had a few miracle wins in the middle of the Pac-10 season that they were as good as they are. Namani with her third kill of game two. She had eight in the opener. And we'll take a timeout. Stanford up by a couple. Ogunna Namani will have more on the All-American when we come back. Game two of our national championship Division I women's volleyball matchup. And now let's take a look at the Coca-Cola game track. It all starts and ends with Ogunna Namani for Stanford. Eight kills in game one, hitting better than 500. Minnesota not finding a way to slow her down. Now, what's interesting, Minnesota has the confidence knowing that one player can go off and they can still win. Minnesota beating Ohio State in the regional finals when Stacy Gordon, who was the co-national player of the year with Ogunna, had 44 kills. So Minnesota's philosophy is you kind of want to slow Ogunna down, but you're going to let her have her kills. The key is stop everybody else. And so far, they haven't been able to do that. They've got to stop Kristen Richards and Jen Huckey. Float serve. Tejas setting up Bowman for the kill. Ogunna Namani uh, has his sister on the team. There's NG Namani. They're from Normal, Illinois. And she gives her sister a lot of credit for uh, her improvement, not only as a player, but as a person. And a prankster. She <laughs> said, the team tells us that every day they get punked by NG Namani. <laughs> and actually one of three sister combinations to play at Stanford, but the first time that two have played together at the same time, of course, the Odin sisters and the Rush sisters, both Stanford alums. Ogunna gets the kill. She and her sister had uh, what they used to call the Namani workouts. The whole family would work out together. Mom and dad would get them going. So it started out when we were younger, you know, we'd walk around the block and then we'd jog around the block. And after a while, we realized that we were working awfully hard. <laughs> It's paid off. Here's uh, some of the uh, Namani family over there. Chica and Uzo, the parents. Also two brothers in attendance. Uh, all coming in from normal animal. Very interesting in a sport where the West Coast teams have dominated. The two players of the year were both uh, from the, either the Midwest or from Canada. Stacey Gordon of Ohio State from Canada. I think that Canadian national team is going to be something special. Stacy Gordon, Sarah Pavin, the freshman stud from Nebraska. Namani. See ya. Well, Tuesday night, it's the Champs Sports Bowl, 745 Eastern, 445 Pacific. The Syracuse Orange, the co-champions of the Big East, taking on Georgia Tech. And the Champ Sports Bowl. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And one of the big questions, who will be running the running the pill for the Orange? Oh, it's Damian Rose, Alter Reyes, a lot of running back options for them. And some big news for Q's alum mm -hmm. on uh, mm -hmm. the athletic director news. Yep, from USC, a former uh, assistant athletic director with uh, the Trojans, Daryl Gross taking over as the new AD at Syracuse. Stanford is up by two here in game two, and Courtney Schultz, the junior from Pacific Palisades, will serve. Aaron Martin got that one in down the line. Martin has become much more consistent in the second game, had a slow start in game one, but now seven kills, and she's doing it by mixing things up. There she's calling that blocking signal, letting her teammates know whether she's blocking line, which is a one, or angle, which is that two. Martin got the block up, but it ricochets wide. Point for the Cardinal. Yeah, Aaron Martin uh, taking over for Cassie Boosie, who was their go-to player last year. 
They've gotten a lot of influence from Boosie even this year. Until about a week ago, Kathy practiced with them every single day until she just left to play overseas. Douse at the net. Falls on the Stanford side. Now Lamani getting a swing. And that's rejected. Nelson almost started to celebrate a little too early. The block really igniting Minnesota. Anytime you can score a point when Ogata is swinging, it's almost like scoring two points because you just get such a mental <laughs> edge. Hockey tried to swoop in, came up a bit short, and we're tied at 20. Timeout for Stanford. And we'll take a break along with them. Game two of the national championship. <laughs> In the distance there, you can see where we are. That's the Long Beach Arena for the national championship match, NCAA Division I. Beth Mullins along with Heather Cox as we close out the fall season for the NCAA championships and trying to do so for the first time, a freshman center looking, uh, looking to win the national championship. Stanford actually won a national championship with two setters, one of them being a freshman. Bryn Kehoe, the chance to become the first one running this 5-1 offense. Carrie Wendell and Lisa Sharpley won together in 94 when Sharpley was a freshman. But what's unique, I think, for Stanford is that all their national championships that they've won, they've had a freshman that's made a major impact. Carrie Wendell in 92, Lisa Sharpley in 94, Carrie Walsh in 96, and of course this year, or actually, uh, Gavin Romani when she was a freshman in 01. Tied at 21. Richards thought that had enough to make it over. Lisa Reinhart will serve. The senior from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Kehoe. Suter off the tape. It was Minnesota making the errors in game one, and now Stanford. Some unforced miscues here in game two. Long way to go for Keo. Tough pass to handle. Free ball, Minnesota. Contagious to Kelly Bowman. And Minnesota having tremendous success with that 6-2 offense. Their setter becomes a hitter, and they're running the X play, which is in the middle of the court. Stanford not defending it well. And Minnesota jumps on top here in game two. Timeout called by John Dunning. As the Gophers rally here in game two trying to win their first national championship and back in august mike ebert said this was an unlikely situation that the gophers now find themselves in i gotta be honest this is probably not the team at the beginning of the season that i would pick to say this team is heading into the finals with a chance to win the national championship uh, i heard russ rose say that about his penn state team in 1999 uh, but as things have played out uh, of the th three other teams I've had at the Final Four, this one probably has the best chance of all four. And both Mike Hebert and John Dunning saying the same thing at the beginning of the season. We would have never believed we could be here. Minnesota hoping to change history. No team has won a title in their first appearance since 1989. Minnesota likes playing here. Believe it or not, Mike Hebert actually born in Long Beach. Moved to San Bernardino mm -hmm. as a toddler, but uh, certainly hoping that that Long Beach rhythm helps him out. What a what a moment for him to be able to come back here to try and win it. Saturday night, ESPN and ESPN 2's coverage of college hoops continues with two more games. First at 10 Eastern on ESPN 2, it's John Lucas and fourth-ranked Oklahoma State taking on the UNLV Running Rebels. And then Saturday at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific on ESPN 2, Gonzaga and third-ranked Georgia Tech with that uh, fantastic backcourt. Yeah, Jarrett Jackett, they're undefeated. 7-0 right now. Holiday Hoops presented by K Jewelers on ESPN and ESPN2. For more info, log on to ESPN.com. Yeah, the ACC, unbelievable. Seven teams in the top 25, five of them in the top 10 in men's hoops. Kind of like the Pac-10 and women's volleyball, three making it to the national semis. Bradford with the kill. 
Ironically enough, I have the last time that happened, uh, the one team that was not from the Pac-10 Conference, John Dunning's UOP team, ended up winning the title back in 1985. How about those Tigers? How about that Tiger knowledge, Adam Owens? I like it. Woo. <laughs> you know how to please me. <laughs> I went back in and read your bio. <laughs> Still hard to see John Dunning with that red Stanford color on instead of the orange of Pacific, but we still love him. He loving on going to Monty right now. 16 kills for the senior. Tejas sets off with a powerful putt. That one put a dent in the floor. Bradford and Martin are heating up and they're doing it by going sharp cross court. Stanford needs to adjust its block, move in, force Minnesota to go down the line. Oh, and the response from Nomani. You know what I love about Ogana's game? Not only is she scoring a tremendous amount of points from kills in the front row, but look at the impact from the back row. She's hitting harder from the back row than most people do in the front row. And she's also scoring points when she's serving. She makes an impact on every rotation of the court. She reminds me of a young Michael Jordan when she swoops through the air like that, almost makes it all the way to the net from the back row. Like she could read the newspaper while she's up there. She's <laughs> hanging forever. There again. she is again. You know, every coach I've talked to this week, the question is, how do you stop Ogana Namani? For the co coaches that have gone up against her, it's interesting to see and hear the philosophy. Brian Jamalero, the head coach at Long Beach State, said, you don't even try. Don't waste your time. It loses confidence. Your team has no confidence that they can get it done. And against Long Beach, Ogana's freshman year, she hit 500 to go to that national Ooh. championship for Stanford. And Brian Jamalero said, nobody's been able to find an answer for her, so don't waste your time. Stanford goes back to Namani late in a game when they need a big point. They get one there. Bryn Kehoe serving. Tough serve from Bryn. Aaron Martin missed it wide. Stanford ties it up. And a timeout called by Minnesota. Ogana Namani, the senior from Normal, Illinois, with another big day. Let's get to know her a little bit better. Well, the Olympus is a really incredible opportunity. Words can't really describe um, the feeling that I felt walking through the opening um, ceremonies, march, and hanging out with all these neat athletes, getting the chance to meet people that you've dreamed of being like on TV. It's just exciting. The thing I like the best about Stanford is the people. The people are excellent. You can walk down the street and see a Nobel Peace Prize winner, look to your right, see a world-renowned musician, see an NBA athlete, Olympic athlete. It's crazy. It's a crazy school. I'm gonna Really, I had a chance to catch up with her in Athens, and she was in awe of the chance that she was even there. A lot of people didn't think she'd even make the team. She became the third outside hitter, made a major impact, really helped the team make it into the medal rounds, and just truly phenomenal. Says that Maria Louise, the great Cuban volleyball player, her all-time favorite, in fact, before big matches, before this match even, she watched the Cuba final in Atlanta back in 1996, so she'd get inspiration from watching Maria Louise, who can sky just <laughs> like Ogana. She had a chance to talk to her in person in their pre-Olympic tour. She ran into Maria in Montreal and big plus for her to be a, have that Olympic opportunity. Aaron Martin. Richards pops it up. Now Namani. Jin Shu is there. They go back to Aaron Martin. Long run for Richards. Tracks it down. Free ball coming from Minnesota. The pass from Bradford. Bowman, Martin, Kehoe, the back set to Hockey, no block is up. Minnesota's defense rallies. Richards calls for it. The freshman, the back set again to Hockey, and again the block was not there. Where is Minnesota's block? It's like everybody's keen on Ogana, nobody respecting Jen Hockey on the right side, and that's when this team is good, when Hockey can provide some input. 
It really opens up things for Ogunna. Look at that, a wide open net. Minnesota has to get at least one up. Release two on Ogunna, keep one up on Huffy. It's first to 30, must win by two. Nelson rejected by Namani, and it's game point for the Cardinals. And that is the first block of the game for the Stanford Cardinal, finding a way to score points without its defense at the net. Couple of big plays for John Dunning. Ogunna Namani, I think the best one-on-one -on -one blocker in the nation. A couple years ago, it was Logan Tom. Now it's Ogunna Namani, and this is a national team Olympic type block. Look at the way she penetrates across the net. Remember in the semis, in game three, they were down late in that game, and they rallied thanks to a couple of miscues by Washington, and now Minnesota not able to get that block up, and Stanford rallies for a couple of quick points. Coming up during the intermission here after game two, we'll take a closer look at Mike Hebert's 6-2 offense. So he'll uh, do a little X's and O's with us and uh, chat with Misty May and Kerry Walsh, the Olympic gold medalists from the beach in Athens. And some highlights and stats from the first couple of games. And there's the Golden Girls. Came in clearly as the favorites and they uh, exceeded everybody's expectations. They won gold, but they did it in a brilliant fashion. Misty May coming in with a torn ab. Nobody know how, knew how healthy she would be. She was phenomenal the entire couple of weeks. And Misty May also a two-time national player of the year for Long Beach State. Both she and Kerry won national championships for their respective schools. Here we go, game point for the Cardinal. Nelson, Kehoe is there defensively. Looking for Namani for the game. And Stanford goes up 2-0. The go-to player gets it done late in game two. And Stanford really now in control of this national championship match. They are one game away from their sixth national championship. And we'll be back right after this. In control, taking games one and two. One game away from a national championship against Minnesota. It's time now to take a closer look at that 6-2 offense that Minnesota runs. And Mike Ebert has the Home Depot coaching clinic. At Minnesota, we deploy an offensive system known as the 6-2. Most schools run what we call a 5-1 system. One setter, five attackers. The 6-2 system deploys two setters and six attackers. Let me show you what I mean. In the basic 5-1 system, there are three rotations where there are three hitters in the front row and eligible to attack. But also, there are three rotations in the 5-1 system where there are only two hitters eligible to attack out of the front row. The setter has rotated to the front row, leaving only two eligible attackers, the left and the middle. We deploy the 6-2 system where there are always three front row attackers and always a setter penetrating from the back row no matter what rotation you're in. We do this because we think there's more deception inherent in the 6-2 system. Thirty twenty-three and thirty twenty-seven. Stanford winning games one and two in the national championship match. And when we come back, Heather Cox has a couple of Olympic gold medalists, Misty May and Carrie Walsh. You've been a good guy. I've been watching you. May, it has been an absolute whirlwind since Athens in August. Describe for us how your life has changed since that gold medal was hung around your neck. Um, well, before Athens, I got to see Misty on a daily basis, and now <laughs> this is the only time I get to see her. Uh, whirlwind is an understatement. You know, we've been all over the all over the country. You know, promoting our sport, promoting our love, our passion, beach volleyball, and these gold medals that we got. But um, our life has changed for the better, and we're very happy. We're very proud. We want to do it again in four more years. You guys came in expected to win gold, and certainly favored to win gold in Beijing. Misty, describe for us playing under those expectations and actually meeting those goals that everybody set for you. Um, it's definitely being, you know, being one of the top teams. Everybody's aiming for you, and especially with a lot of the media that was going on, my injury, there were a lot of speculations. Um, we just had to come out, and we, I thought we were very focused. Um, 
I use the analogy, you know, the horses in the horse races, they have the blinders on, and that's all Carrie and I, we were focused. We never went out in Athens, never really saw much of the city's other events. Um, we were just there for one reason, and we did it. It was certainly a magical run and a magical performance. A lot of people talking about Beijing and 2006. Describe the timeline between now and 2008. Uh, well, the qualification starts in 2006, and Beijing is right around the corner, and Misty and I, we're going to be together four more years, you know, I hope, and it's just, it's exciting, you know, it all starts this year. You know, we won the gold medal, that was a great goal, but we have other goals in sight, and we want to dominate on the AVP, where we want to have fun, but Beijing is the, the ultimate goal, we want another gold medal. Before your Olympic days, both of you won national championships in the collegiate ranks. Misty, you two-time Player of the Year at Long Beach. In fact, you've been very involved this week in handing out those national Player of the Year awards. What type of advice were you able to give those current All-Americans? Um, you know, it was very exciting for me to give back and especially be here and kind of see it from the outsider's point of view. I miss playing indoor and sure, you know, I'm sure Kerry does too. But I just told him, you know, to be in the moment. Um, not to worry about. I did the four, final four banquet on um, Wednesday, I think, and I told them there is no guarantee for a Saturday. And now I did the All-American banquet yesterday and told the girls, you know, just to give it all they had and just to take, you know, take away from it that they've inspired so many kids that they don't know of yet. You guys have certainly inspired a lot as well. Congratulations on that gold medal. Thank you, Beth, let's head back to you. Thank you very much, Heather. And another youngster that's got her sights set on a gold medal and a national championship, Ogunna Namane, one of her 20 kills in the match. Stanford up on Minnesota, two games to none here in this national championship match. The Cardinal looking for their sixth national title. Beth Mowens along with Heather Cox. And Heather, it's been an impressive performance so far by the Cardinal. Well, I'm so impressed with the confidence that they're playing and they're getting everybody involved. Those role players like we talked about have really stepped up and become impact players. Ogana certainly doing everything that she needs to do, but Kristen Richards and Jen Huckey and the freshman setter, everybody yep. really doing exactly what the game plan called for. They're going to be awfully tough to beat if they continue to hit better than 450 for the match. And now let's uh, uh, take a look at our Coca-Cola game track. And uh, as you would expect, it's uh, a lot of good stuff on the Stanford Cardinal. They continue to go outside to Agana. She started off hot, eight kills in game one, and then she just continued. Game two, now 12 kills, hitting 57%. And then she's getting that support from players like Kristen Richards and Jen Huckey. And right now, Stanford playing on all cylinders. We talked about Minnesota needing to do that. They're not. And as we start game three, a must-win game for Minnesota. They come out swinging with the first point. Minnesota in the white jersey. Stanford uh, in the dark unis. And that's in for a point from the freshman, Francie Girard. It's funny, talking to Carrie Walsh before uh, before that intermission, she said, watching Stanford, I'm so nervous. I'm more nervous than I am when I'm playing. She said she's got butterflies in her belly, and she is so anxious for Stanford to get that sixth national title. She was a member of their last national championship team in 2001. And Ogunna Namani uh, trying to bookend her championships as a freshman and as a senior. Actually, that was the Logan Tom team in 2001. Played across by Martin. Minnesota scrambling. Stanford goes to Nomani, trying to tip it over the block and comes up short. Hard to believe that's just the second error for Nomani. Hitting percentage continues to be crucial. 440 for Stanford, just 276 for Minnesota. I also think the blocking number Stanford led the Pac-10 in blocking the last six years. Continues that trend tonight. So much for finesse. She made the error on the tip, and she goes back to the big swing yeah, to get who the kill. Needs it? <laughs> you can hit over anybody in the country. We're gonna just do it. Don't show us all your tricks. Just hit it hard. I think she was inspired by that big hit to Steve Bradford in that last game, and that got her going again. As Minnesota gets the kind roll off the take. Interesting offensively for Minnesota. They're getting the balance. Martin leads with nine, but right behind there, Tree Bradford with eight, Meredith Nelson with eight. The problem is they're not being efficient. They're not making the most of their swings and hitting a high percentage. Kehoe goes to Lizzie Suter. All the Cardinals getting involved here. Five kills now for Lizzie. 
the freshman setter, Bryn Kehoe, leading the charge with the distribution. The back set to Bowman. And a violation on Stanford going into the net. Kehoe looks to Jen Hockey, pounds it down. For a complete wrap-up of the 2004 Fall NCAA Championships, including men's and women's soccer and men's water polo, visit NCAAsports.com, the official online home for all 88 NCAA championships. I don't want to take away the surprise, but if you do look on that NCAAsports.com, you would find that UCLA won the men's water polo, and both of the men's and women's soccer went to PKs this year, with the Indiana men winning and the Notre Dame women winning. We take a look at some, uh, those are just a, a sprinkling of the 22 fall championships under the NCAA this fall. Congratulations to the uh, most recent football titleist, James Madison last night and Linfield earlier today winning their first ever national championships. That's what Minnesota is trying to do here in Long Beach, but they are really up against it with a hot Stanford team. Well, and you see the support that Kristen Richards now providing. Richards was missed that she didn't get on the All-American team. She said, she didn't say it outright, but she was visibly frustrated and has a lot to prove and feels like she deserved to be on that squad, and rightfully so, I think. And I bet any of the All-Americans would gladly change that honor for a championship ring, which Richards is in line for right now. And a Minnesota player injured on that last play with Paula Genshu, who stays down. Minnesota does get the point, but Genshu stays down on the floor. She's such an emotional leader for this squad, and you see the type of defense that she plays. She gives everything she can. Physically out there, you see that she's wearing that left quadricep sleeve because it was torn in the semifinal win. Yeah, I think he could have done it. I'm telling you right now, it's an inadvertent whistle, but I'll check with him for you. In the meantime, okay. you hear Joan Powell telling O'Gunner Namani it was an inadvertent whistle. Only the captain is allowed to talk to the official at any time, but can certainly ask questions. So we can see what happened to Jenshu colliding with a teammate. And it looks like a knee may have gone into her upper left back. We've got the trainer out on the floor right now. Watch the knee. She of her teammate. Yeah. As she was really extending that right arm out and the shoulder. Getting worked on now in that upper back region. Paula Genshu, the junior Libro from Brazil, who uh, played a couple of years in Florida in high school before joining Minnesota and uh, Buying into Mike Hebert's claims that she could be a difference maker and that really changed the way that that position is played and how effective it is utilized in the college game. Right. Both Andy Banikowski and Mike Hebert in the forefront bringing Libros as scholarship recruited athletes to that position, really true specialist, Paula Genshua. First team All-American, as you take another look, both Pinata and Genshu go for the ball exactly as they're supposed to, but it looks as if Pinata's knee may have hit Genshu at some point during that collision. Genshu continues to be treated and looked at. If she can't go, Pinata would continue to play that role as defensive specialist, but they wouldn't go to another Libra if she can't go in. Just trying to keep her calm over there on the bench as uh, they work on the back of Paula Genshu. Look at the number she's put up, a new NCAA single season digs record. Her career number's third all time. Next year, she would be in line to set a new all time digs record. And Stanford gets the point. Bryn Kehoe, as Minnesota goes without a Libro right now. And actually, I'm just watching Jen Bowman putting on the different colored jersey. She is the sister to the setter, Kelly Bowman. 
now putting on that dark jersey to become the Libra for Minnesota. And Aaron Martin with the kill. There she goes, quick uniform change, and she'll go right out onto the floor. There she goes. First appearance in the national championships for Minnesota. So both the Bowmans out there together now for Minnesota, her first touch. And this is tough, Beth. She's been standing on the sidelines, really coaching, working on strategies. Changes her uniform and then boom, into serve. Now playing with her sister. There's great chemistry on the floor when these two are out there. And Jen known as a great leader for this team. Teammates call her grandma. She's always <laughs> out there making sure everything's in order, everybody's in line, doing what they have to do. And one more point, I think Mike Hebert needs to call a timeout. Settle this team down. Stanford just attacking the new player on the court, Bowman, which is a smart thing to do. Kehoe took it out of the net to get it to Namani. Boy, the freshman has been so impressive in her first national championship game appearance. She just has ice running through her veins. I think Mike Hebert had hoped that the freshman would be a little bit more jittery to start out this match. Minnesota gets a point to go up 10-9, and now Pages will serve. The service error is number eight in the match for Minnesota. And I really think this is a team that needs a timeout. They lost their emotional leader in Jen Shu. I think Hebert needs to slow things down and take some time to talk about it. That time a back row attack by Tejas, and you just can't let them score in bunches here. We are in Long Beach, California for the NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball National Championship. Beth Mullins along with Heather Cox as the Stanford Cardinal go for their sixth national title. The Minnesota Golden Gophers looking for the first in their program's history. Stanford has taken games one and two, and they can close out the match here in the third. And there is the timeout from Mike Hebert. Stanford up a couple here in the third. Lead over Minnesota 12-10 here in game three of the national championship. The Cardinal up 2-0 already. And Tuesday night, Damian Rhodes, Walter Reyes, and Diamond Perry lead the Big East co-champion Syracuse Orange against Reggie Ball and the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech. A couple of six and five teams. Getting it on at the Champ Sports Bowl, Tuesday at 7.45 Eastern on ESPN. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. And Paula Zhenshu still over there on the bench after the injury for Minnesota. During that last timeout, she's asking her trainer, please let me go back in. You see what Stanford's done with her on the, on the bench. 7-2 run without Zhenshu. And Zhenshu obviously in a lot of pain, but also very frustrated continues to say, please, I want to play, and the training staff telling her she's probably not going to return. In her stead, Jen Bowman put on the Libro uniform. She's out there right now, but it's been a, uh, a run for the Cardinals since Jen Shu went out. It is now 8-2 run since the injury. Paula Jen Shu with 15 digs early in this match. She ran into Ogana Namani yesterday in the elevator, and Ogana said, I'm not going to hit it to you. And Paula said, please, come on, let's go back at it, you and me. Richards dug up. That was a nice play by Bowman. And then off the take for Bradford. What a great night Bradford's had. Now into double digits with 10 kills. It starts with the dig. And Bowman now in as that Libro for Paula Genshu, the senior, the sister, the starting setter, and really a great emotional leader for this team. Kelly Bowman to Bradford, blocked by Suter. Penata looks back to Tree. Tree the block for the kill. Ten now for Bradford, ties it at 13. Playing right now without their emotional leader and perhaps the best defensive player in the country out with the injury. Stanford gets the point to take the lead back. Jen Shu desperately wants to return to the match. The training staff still working on her back and her shoulder. 
Leai Hall, the senior from Haiku, Hawaii, serves it up. Played back over by Hall. Now Bradford again, number 11. Wait, she just gets better as this match progresses. If they can figure out a way to win this game and take it into four or five, Bradford and Martin are the type of outside hitters that just get better and better as the match progresses. Keto, the back set. Hucky swooping in for the kill. John Dunning before this match said the big question mark, what will Jen Hockey do with that sore shoulder and how much heat can Kristen Richards provide so far? Both of them have been excellent, taking a lot of pressure off of a gunner Namani. Namani has been spectacular, but the rest of the Cardinals have come to play today. And the freshman, Bryn Keogh, with another block. This is a player who has grown up around volleyball. In fact, joked that there was one in her crib. Both of her parents, <laughs> volleyball players, her mom, a two-time All-American at Western Michigan. Her dad, Steve, played at Ball State. And it shows she does not play like a freshman. Jesse Jones. And uh, Stanford player got into the net, so a point for Minnesota. The Golden Gophers need game three to extend this match. Reinhardt. Kehoe had to take that one out of the net. Richards is rejected. The freshman Jones from Naperville, Illinois. Played in just 27 games all season. Kehoe, a back row player, had to set that ball instead of attacking. Jones, a great defender at the net. Keo kicks up the drive in the middle. Here comes Minnesota. Aaron Martin. Point Stanford. Coach and staff starting to think it's Martin time. That's what they say when they need Martin to start producing. And even in timeouts and huddles, they'll just say, hey guys, it's Martin time. And everybody knows what that means. Jones. Richards. Opportunity here. Let's see if they go to Martin. They do. Aaron with a swing. Kehoe got a piece of it. Jones on the overpass puts it away. Jones came to Minnesota as what Coach Hebert calls a freelance Brock blocker. Since then, she's learned to be much more disciplined. Gone through surgery on both her knee and her shoulder, starting in just her second career match. Another service error for Minnesota. That's number nine. Jen Shu trying to get it together. She knows she can be a vocal leader at the point from the bench. Tay just makes the play. Now Lindsay on the jump serve. Kehoe to Namani, who's back in front. And they go to her right away. They go to Namani after a USC match. And you can see the type of impact she's made in championship finals, just incredible. But it's also about the mental aspect, the emotional leader that she's been. She gave the team a speech after their loss to USC. She said, when I started with the national team, I was so nervous. Every rep I took, I was nervous. I didn't believe it. I played with fear. She said, you can't play with fear, and they haven't done it since then. Stanford up by two here in game three, trying to close out the match and deny Minnesota their first title. Is today the day you get treated with respect? You get a fair price? A really fair price? You'll celebrate? Injury that uh, took her out of the, the match uh, earlier in game three. And on the other side, Ogunna Namani has been spectacular. 25 kills to lead the way. If Stanford wins game three, they win their sixth national championship. Game is to 30, must win by two. Contagious to Bowman, big swing. Good defense by Courtney Schultz. Contagious to Meredith Nelson. Jen Hucky blocked by Martin. Hucky will set Namani. And Martin's pass goes into press row. Kehoe. No 
Nelson tips it over the top. Another chance here for Stanford. They go to Namani again. Boy, Minnesota has to score on first contact. They're giving Stanford way too many opportunities to set Ogun and Imani. Right now, she's proving unstoppable. Look at that, hitting 545, which means you take the amount of kills, subtract just those two errors, which is easy to do. <laughs> And then you want to divide it by total attempts. I mean, you see a line like this, and this is truly impressive. So you divide that 24 by 44 to come up with that 545 hitting percentage. Just the two errors with all the attempts that she has, remarkable. Knowing that there's going to be two or three blockers on the other side every time. Here she goes again and gets another one. And she's mixing it up best. She went cross court sharp the last two times. This time hits across her body. And She's just toying with Minnesota's defense right now. We're watching one of the best performances here in NCAA Volleyball Championship history. Ogana Namani, the co-national player of the year and four-time All-America. Leading the way for the Cardinals, she was a part of that three-game sweep in the 2001 championship over Long Beach. Nelson misses Long. We're going to check to see if there was a touch. Nope. And right now it looks like Minnesota starting to feel desperate. They're starting to try and manufacture some emotion. They need to just buckle down, execute. It starts with a pass. Pages to Bowman. Didn't make it across. Four points for the match. A 21 to 11 run for the Cardinals since Yen Shu went out with the injury. Bradford. Stanford's defense getting to everything right now. Namani dug up. And another Minnesota error. 20 hitting errors today for the Golden Gophers. Net violation by Stanford, point for Minnesota. And right now, it's all about execution. Playing perfect volleyball, you've got to serve well, allow your blocks to score points. Serve tough enough that they can't serve Namani and, and go to her in the back row. Not even giving yourself a chance right now, and this is when it gets so frustrating as a player. Two points to the match for Stanford. Leahy Hall serving. Frankfurt for Minnesota. Most teams would think this is a good point scoring opportunity because Namani in the back row, but she's proven today to be just as effective, and that's back to back service errors for Minnesota. National championship point for the Stanford Cardinal. Hockey with a terrific serve. And it's gonna be a free ball for the Cardinal. Kehoe. Kristen Richards blocked. Kept alive. Back row, Namani. Game over, match over. The Stanford Cardinal are the 2004 national champions. Women's Volleyball Program, the national championship, will go back to the farm. They get the sweep over Minnesota today, 3-0. It was a solid team effort led by their All-America, Ogana Namani, as well as the terrific setting performance today and overall game for their freshman setter, Bryn Kehoe. Valiant, valiant effort by Mikey Burt squad, Minnesota making history, appearing in the national championship match for the first time, and you see the respect that Paula Jenshu and Ogana Namani, first team All-American, have for one another. 30 to 21, the final in game three. Let's take a look at the Pontiac high performance moment. 
And it's match point from the back row. Ogana Namani, 29 kills. It went to the outside, it got blocked, it gets covered. What do you do? Go to the National Player of the Year to finish things off. How about 62 kills in the semis and the final for Namani? And the rush from the Cardinal team off the bench. The 11th seed coming into this tournament wins the title. Stanford wins the title. We'll be back for more from Long Beach Arena right after this. The Stanford Cardinal match point for their sixth national championship as they get the sweep over Minnesota and bring Kehoe with a hug there. The first time ever that a setter in a 5-1 offense wins the national championship in her freshman season. And a terrific year for the University of Minnesota comes to a close, their first appearance in a national championship match, getting farther than any other Minnesota team in history. And a wonderful, a wonderful performance from the Golden Gophers this year, including their upset of USC in the semis. And, uh, Heather Cox is now standing by with a uh, four-time national championship coach, John Dunning. Indeed, two titles at Pacific, now his second at Stanford. And coach, at the beginning of the season, would you ever believe you'd be standing here having just won a national championship? You know, with teams, you always believe, but there's no way I would expect it in any way, um, except for the fact that we have such a great player and person on our team to lead us. You know, you got, maybe you got to have somebody like that to get you there in a season like this. And some awful good coaching as well. 15 <laughs> consecutive wins. What was the turning point where you knew that this could be something special? We had, in uh, mid-November, we had three or four wins. Washington, uh, a couple others that eat, we sh probably should have lost. And then when you, you win in that situation, the team that really doesn't think they're that good starts to believe. And then the more it piles on, it's like a snowball rolling downhill. Um, and by the end, we had a lot of momentum. We really believed we were going to win today. Today, you were going up against a Minnesota team that had never been in a national championship. You guys had already won five. How much was experience and confidence a factor in this win? You know, I, I think it had a lot to do with it. Um, how can you replace the experience and the feeling you get when you have an Olympian on your side? And it, um, when you know that you just can lean on her, no matter whether you pass it or to the net or not, our setter can get it to her. Uh, she probably had as many kills out of the back row. But our team did, I thought, a great job around her today. I thought Kristen and Jen did amazing jobs, our two freshman middles. And I thought Brent Kehoe for a freshman in the situation was sensational. Absolute great team effort. Congratulations. It must be awful fun to coach an Olympian and get a national championship along the way. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's just a <laughs> blessing. Uh, Christmas, whatever. <laughs> Life is good. Congratulations, is good. coach. Thank you and now much. we are joined by that Olympian, Ogana. We're going to have a quick chat with you. Congratulations Thank on you an so amazing much. performance. 29 kills. Was there ever a point in which you felt pressure? You know, you feel pressure the whole season. It's just a big relief. I'm just so excited. Mm -hmm. For these girls, they just bring tears to my eyes. How hard they've worked, how hard we fought all year. We just kept believing and believing and fighting for each other every day in practice. So I just have to play well for them in honor of them. And I'm just so thankful for a great team and great coaches. After competing in Athens in August and joining your team, did you ever think at that point that you'd be standing here having won a title? I kept thinking after Athens, I'm like, how am I going to get my team to the promise land? to get better. I kept asking myself that all year long because I couldn't find answers. And finally, two months ago, we started to find answers. We just started to work together. That experience at Athens really gave me the, the opportunity to be strong mentally and really carry my team in any way I, ha I can. And they carried me all the time. They're, they're carrying me. I'm just doing my part. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's an impressive part that you're playing. What about Christian Richards? Your, your freshman setter, Bryn Kehoe, how important was it to have their support today? Both of them are phenomenal. So now I can't talk right now. I'm just too excited. <laughs> phenomenal. You and me both. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just too excited right now. But those two work so hard every day. They have that competitive drive, and it's just contagious. I just love working with them, and I'm really sad that this is our last year, but it couldn't end any way better. So. 
an incredible career. You start your freshman year with a national championship. You complete it with a bookend your senior year. How special has it been? Oh, very special. I'm really going to feel it when I leave. And this team's really meant so much to me. And I'm thankful to Stanford for giving me this opportunity, Coach Dunning for giving me this opportunity, and Denise. I'm really thankful for them. Congratulations on an incredible performance and a great career. And I want to give a special thank you to Kim Odin. I talked to her before the game, and she's my good luck charm, and I want to thank her very much for all that she's done. She's really motivated me throughout the year. And Kim Oden, a great at Stanford as well, paved yeah. the way for players like Ogunna and Amani. Beth? Thank you, Heather, and certainly, uh, even though Ogunna is graduating, not the last we will hear from her in volleyball circles, a bright future with USA Volleyball as well. 29 kills and just two errors on the day for Ogunna and Amani. Brought to you by The Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Back here in Long Beach and the 2004 national champion Stanford Cardinal with the sweep over Minnesota for the sixth championship in Stanford's uh, storied history. And Ogunna Namani with a championship as a freshman and now as a senior. And perhaps Bryn Keogh can pull off the same thing over the course of her career as the freshman is standing by now with Heather Cox. In fact, Bryn Keogh becomes the first true freshman as a setter to lead her team to a national championship. Bryn, it didn't look like you were feeling any pressure out there at all, but inside, were you? Actually, um, no. <laughs> I, I think um, early in the season, I got kind of through that nervousness of being a freshman, playing in front of big crowds. And surprisingly, although there are probably about 10,000 people here, I wasn't really that nervous. Describe for us what it's like to be able to set for a player like Ogun and Amani. It's an amazing feeling. I mean, just knowing that no matter what, she's going to put down that ball. Such a terminal hitter, it's so fun to set. You started this season as a freshman. You told me yesterday you didn't feel like a freshman after everything that you guys have been through. But tell me how much John Dunning has helped you in terms of, of working with you as a setting coach to get you prepared for moments like this. John is an amazing coach. He's definitely helped me through the season to get over, you know, freshman tendencies. And he even told me just after this game, he was like, I'm so proud of you. You set so smart. And that is just the biggest compliment to me because that shows that like although I started out maybe as a freshman I ended up just setter. <laughs> you guys have won 15 consecutive and now win the national championship. What's been the difference to get to this point where you were good enough to win the title? I think that we were always good but it was just that team chemistry and um, it really developed in the middle of the season and once we had that team chemistry we knew we weren't going to lose. Now as a freshman, you win that national championship. You've got three more years. Can it get any better than this? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Best feeling. Congratulations. Life certainly good for Bryn and the entire Stanford program. Beth? The numbers for Bryn, 48 uh, sets today for her. 10 digs, or 48 assists, rather, 10 digs. And uh, terrific performance by Kehoe to distribute uh, Namani with the 22 kills, but then Kristen Richards with eight, Jennifer Huckey had nine, uh, Lizzie Suter had six. And as a team, hitting 436, a uh, terrific reflection on the job that the freshman setter did. And uh, the defensive effort was there as well, Heather. Uh, they did a terrific job blocking I thought in particular in that third game and uh, defensively they seem to keep every ball alive in order to get uh, Kehoe a chance to set up Nomani. Yeah beautiful transition and you see the offense that they had hitting 436. I also love their blocking game has led the Pac-10 the last six years continued to do that today. They were just efficient smart volleyball players kept the ball alive forced Minnesota to make the mistakes. And it's a, another national championship for a Pac-10 school. There was a lot of talk about the Big Ten making some waves this year, but the title stays uh, in the Pac-10 conference. But certainly parity seems to be more apparent around the country now. Certainly so. I think this was the most wide open field we've had in 24 years of NCAA tournament volleyball. And Stanford took advantage of it. They grabbed it by the horns and made an incredible run through December for their sixth national title. Ogun and Amani, a name to 
look for and watch for in the future for the United States. Yeah, she leaves the Stanford Cardinal program, but you will see a lot of her if you're a volleyball fan. Once again, the final score, the 11 seed Stanford Cardinal with the sweep of the four seed Minnesota, 30-23, 30-27, and then 30-21 to win their sixth national championship. Ogana Namani leading the way with 29 kills and just a couple of errors. Uh, ending Minnesota's run for their first uh, uh, their first bid for a national championship. The 2004 NCAA Division I Women's Volleyball Champions, the Stanford Cardinal. This has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up next, it's the Audi Mixtape Tour. For Heather Cox, I'm Beth.